knew avalanche danger was high. I got three turns in, and then all of a sudden the whole thing let loose. Avalanche! Slide, slide, slide! Look at the last uh, 10 years, and it's averaging about 30 fatalities per year. People weren't skiing then like they are now. There, were, there was no such thing as an avalanche beacon. There's a lot more interest in, in being in that country than there was 30 years ago. I mean, you go down to the San Juans and every avalanche path is skied. The snow during the winter here is so dynamic. It's always changing and gravity is always working on it. And so your forecast has to be based on what you see, what you observe, what you hear, and what you feel. One, two, three. But for the first time, we were kind of getting our hands around the avalanche problem in the United States. Ski patrols benefited by having this large database that was there. I was very, very conservative. Um, we all were. Um, we just had that responsibility. It's, it's up to you to know what's out there and to know what to do when you're an avalanche train. I'm a captain in the Special Forces. As a mountain team, it's important for us to, to be out here in this type of environment, uh, in the snow, in the mountains, uh, doing what it is we do best. If you're out there playing with, uh, with avalanches, they're going to bite you now and then. Sometimes it wakes me up during the middle of the night. I think I'd probably be crazy and maybe a little more worried if I didn't have those gut check moments. And you find yourself running over all the, all the factors and all the possibilities as you're on your way up, thinking about what the consequences might be if you make a mistake.